cooking. Okie dokie. So, um, sorry we uh, did not meet last uh, Thursday. Uh, it was an interesting, uh, interesting day. Um, so, in any case... Uh, let's go over the assignment that was due then. I gave you a reading assignment over the weekend, right? And then I want to start looking at, uh, we want to, um, we've gotten our app to get us to se separate pages, right? So we can go from page one to page two where we're entering in an employee. Um, so our code up here for that, let me just minimize this guy here. So when this screen is created, we go ahead and we grab all this information for our employee. Remember last time, we created this employee object. So uh, when we reviewed kind of what objects are for, we decided, okay, for an employee, we're gonna hold information about first name, last name, uh, height and feet and inches, age, weight, blah, blah, blah. Um, so then when we create an employee, we'll read that stuff in. And then we gave ourselves getters and setters. Um, actually, I think we gave ourselves just getters for these. Uh, remind me, what does it mean for these guys to be private? <clears throat> I've forgotten. Okay. Go ahead. Okay, so these are, and what kind of guys are these? Are these cats, dogs, methods, constructors, or fields? Fields. Fields, fields. okay. Well, at least nobody said cats. All right, so, so private, this is like a security measure. And I mentioned that we want to make things as secure as possible and then loosen the reins if we need to. So by making these guys private, what we end up doing is we're saying, you can only access this field from within the class named employee. Okay, <clears throat> that's what that means. Now, if you did need to access it outside of this class, so for instance, we might want to get the name of our employee, well, we have a couple of options. The quick and easy option might be to make this guy public then we have read and write access to that field because we're directly working with the field. Now, what we did here is we kept it private, but then gave ourselves a public accessor method, a public getter that allows us to return the value of that private field. We can't change it, so we don't have full access to it, but we can extract the value and see what its, what its value is. Make sense? All right, so this object here, is its job is to represent what an employee is. And then we have our <coughs> screen here for our employee entry, where we're reading in a first name, a last name, a height and feet, height and inches, age and weight. And then we put the create button up here at the top because I mentioned that, you know, the uh, keyboard slides up and, you know, we're going to say this is the perfect size of the keyboard and that's on purpose but it's really just my interface sucks um, but we'll put our create button up uh, top there and now when we go into our employee entry activity so that is the activity that governs this screen what do we do when we click that button well we say has there been an employee created so initially i'm storing a null employee here at the top so i'm giving myself a private field that belongs to this particular um, uh, instance of employee entry activity. And this guy starts off as being nothingness. So the first time I hit that on uh, create employee button, it's gonna say, is my employee currently equal to null? If it is, I'm gonna go ahead and read in all my pieces of information, and then I'll set that employee equal to a new employee. Make sense? <coughs> now, for our homework, we were to, for the homework that was due last Thursday, we were to implement what's in this else. That is, what if our employee currently has stuff in it? If we already have created an employee, now we want to update that employee, we're going to have to um, set the values of that employee to something new or give ourselves some sort of update method. So this allows the create button to also update the current employee object. Um, notice I said here, you only have getters for your private employee fields currently. Okay, so now is it true 
that no matter whether I'm updating or creating a new employee, I'm gonna need all those pieces of information. Everything I've highlighted there, I need to read in from my interface regardless of whether I'm creating a new employee or whether I'm updating an existing employee, correct? So I'm gonna go ahead and just move that before this if statement. So I have access to those variables regardless of whether I'm creating new or I'm updating an existing. Make sense? All right, so we'll do that. <coughs> Whoa. Okay. Now, if I'm in this else here, I need to update the employee with this new information I just read in. Now, I can do this a couple of different ways. One way is, is I can give myself a update method for an employee that allows me to pass it the exact same pieces of information. <coughs> so, I'm going to do this a couple of different ways. So, I'm going to create a public method inside of employee called update data. And I'll have that guy take in, and he's going to return nothing. I'll have him take in the exact same information that our constructor took in and have it go ahead and set that data. Now, would you say that this information right here, and that, well, let's actually get this running first and then I'm going to ask this question. Okay, so I have a function called update data, which effectively does the identical thing to our constructor. Okay, so what I'm going to do here, I've read in my information. Here's the stuff I'm going to pass in. <clears throat> so what am I going to do? I'm going to say, I'm going to steal those things right here. I'll say this dot the employee dot update data and pass in all that stuff. So that's one way we could have accomplished the homework assignment. Now, let's go and improve this a little bit. Now, based on the hint I gave you, I'm going to guess that most of you did not do it this way, no. right? Because the hint I gave you uh, alluded to you creating setters, right? So let's, let's just finish up the little discussion about this real quick, and then I'll go do the setter version of this, okay? So I'll go into employee. Now, this is kind of a programming rule of thumb. Programming rule of thumb would be you don't want to repeat code um, in your solutions. So in this case, I have this chunk of code, which is absolutely identical to this chunk of code. That chunk of code should only exist once, even if I'm using them in two places. Make sense? <clears throat> How can I fix this? Oh, your chair's right here. I saved it for you. You can just kind of cozy up right here. <laughs> I didn't actually move it. It was sitting here. I didn't like purposely go over there. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Oh, uh, where do you want to do? Oh, so you want to do something with extends here? I mean, like after update data, so extend employee. Okay, so you want, you want to do something along the lines of this keyword that you've seen before, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so that keyword is only going to be used when we're telling a class that you've inherited everything from something else. Would you agree that this code right here definitely will set all the fields for this particular uh, object. Yes. So if I gave it all of these values, it will definitely set those fields. What's the goal of that? 
Is it also to set those fields? It is, right? It's setting those fields. We might say it's a constructor, so we're initializing the fields, but it is setting them to an initial value, right? So can't I... Say this dot update data f name l name height feet height inches age and weight. So I'll write that code one time and I just happen to call it from within my constructor. Is that allowed? Now, does that mean that the other way is wrong? No. Could I duplicate the code twice? What's the what? Give me an example of why that might cause uh, some headaches in the future mm. by having that code written twice. Go ahead. And the catalyst for that would be. We change the what kind of additional creepy information we want to keep track of for employees, right? Like shoe size, you know, number of hair follicles, you know, normal stuff. Right? <laughs> so if we went and updated, added a field, subtract a field, whatever, and then we went in and only updated our constructor with that information, forgetting to update data. Well, then we have an ability to update data that doesn't update everything, and then a constructor that happens to set all the values. So if we have our logic in a single place, and that captures all the different values, then we can just call it from wherever. The idea is that when we update our code, <coughs> we make a change to our code, we should only have to change it in a single place. And this kind of goes back to something that was a question that came up a couple of classes ago about that string.xml file, oh, yeah. where you can have like the name of your app or some, some value that you might have appear 15, 20 times throughout your application. So rather than hard code that text 15 or 20 times throughout your app, you put it in that single strings thing and then reference it in all those places. So if you decide to change your app from version 1.0 to version 1.1, you only have to change it in that single strings XML file and then it will automatically change in the rest of your app. Go ahead. Yeah, it's because this guy's a constructor and I don't have a way of calling him directly from within inside the, he, he's like this magical special case. You know, constructors uh, exist to, to create new instances of objects. Um, okay, so this is one way we could have accomplished it. We might say that this is a, um, a, a pretty good way. We haven't duplicated the code. We've given ourselves a single convenience method to update everything. But we might also say that, you know what, why did I make these guys private in the first place if I was just going to give people just free access to just change them? We can make that argument. We're just going to pretend like it's not a problem <laughs> in our amazing application here. It still goes to say that we had to purposely give ourselves this update function. We chose to do that. Right? We could certainly put some logic in here or maybe only change the things that actually change, that kind of stuff. All right. Now, what many of you probably did, remember last time we created these getters? And you can we could write the functions for setters. So we can say, you know, if I wanted to write a setter here, I can say public <coughs> void, because setters aren't giving us a value, we're setting a value, so it's not going to return anything. And we can say set f name. And this guy would take in a string f name as a parameter. And I'll say this dot f name is equal to whatever f name you give me. Make sense? All right. We can write those for all of our fields. Or we can use the built-in ability in Android. We'll right-click. We'll say generate. And we're going to say we want to generate a bunch of getters. I'm sorry, setters. We already have our getters. 
and you just select all of your fields that we want setters for. In this case, we want it for all of them. Hit OK, and now we have a bunch of setters. So then what most of you likely did for your homework is rather than making a single function call like this, you did something like this dot the employee dot set f name equal to f name. This dot employee dot set, well, we'll just do it all. <clears throat> set l name equal to l name. Set, uh, what comes next? Well, here, we'll set age equal to age. This dot the employee dot set height feet to height feet. This dot the employee dot set height inches to height inches. And this dot the employee dot set weight to weight. So that's likely the approach most of you took. Yeah. And realistically, based on this called stupid little example, either one of these is equally reasonable. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Questions on that? All right, so now we'll go ahead and run this real quick. Actually, I'll show you. Uh, why is it defaulting to that one? Remember, this is the one that takes a month to load? Just like they have like multiple. Yeah. So there's like five in there for like five to twenty-five bucks. <laughs> so tar Target has cheap Android phones. Uh, let's see which one was that. <laughs> it was these arm ones, wasn't it? I don't even remember anymore. Here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get rid of, actually, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get rid of all of them. And then I'll just create another one real quick. <laughs> that way he'll only have one that he can start. <clears throat> okay. So we'll do Pixel 2, Oreo, Finish. Amazing. Okay. <coughs> now when I hit play, you should only have one option. And there he goes. Here, while that guy's cooking for a second, we might want to be, we might want to know that, um, uh, uh, we've updated our employee or that we've created a new employee to kind of prove to us what we're in here. There's this thing called a toast um, that we can um, uh, do, which gives you like a little kind of pop up on the screen so we can we can make toast. Uh, what is that? This dot. Or is it actually toast? Toast dot make text. So I'm going to say toast dot make text. My context is going to be this. And my text is going to be employee <clears throat> updated. And then I do have to show the toast. So he takes a context. Oh, then a duration. I left one variable off the end here. So we have long and short toast. So it takes the context in which we're, this is happening from, the message that we want it to have in it, and then the, um, it's actually 
toast dot length long. We'll say something like that. All right, so that's if we are updating. We'll do a similar thing in here. We'll say employee created. <coughs> so we'll get a little message on the screen telling us what actually occurred. I'll go ahead and run this again real quick. All right, so we're going to go ahead and say add new employee. And we'll say Mike Littman, six foot five inches. I'm 21, and I'm a slim 185. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> Okay, fine. I'm 27. All right, so we'll do a create. Oh, I'm guessing I never actually hooked up my create button in my code. So let's go out to our employee entry. This guy doesn't have an on click set for him. So I need to go and set my on click. I wrote all the code, but I didn't set his on click. So I'll set that. We'll run this again. All right, and and we'll be honest here. <clears throat> oh, it said it down here. The toast is on the bottom. Here I'll. So I've already created it. So if I hit create again, see it says updated down here. That's my toast down here at the bottom. All right, so it's letting me know what, what went down. All right, so now what I'm gonna do, <coughs> just to give myself a convenience, I'm gonna create a um, little method here called to text or something like that for my, uh, um, employee. We've actually already talked about the two-string method, right? So I'll go ahead and re rewrite the two-string method. You just give the first and last name of this employee. That'll prove to us that we have the employee, right? So I'll say public string two-string. And this guy will return this dot F name concatenated with a space concatenated with this dot L name. All right. So now a employee knows how to um, display himself well he knows how to return himself as a string and we can actually see this work we can test this real quick by doing this inside of our uh, um, inside of our toasts just to see it work So we'll say this is who we just created or this is who we just updated. <clears throat> All right, and I'll go ahead and hit create. We should see the created down below. Employee created, Mike, and that's gonna be a really tough to pronounce last name. <laughs> Uh, then we'll go in and change uh, height and inches to three, and there's my employee updated. All right, so we're getting some feedback now, right? Now, what I'd like to see happen is when I'm in my app and I go back here, I want to be able to see the information about that employee on this screen. I want this screen to have access to that employee. Who owns the employee variable right now? Employee entry activity? So when I'm on this screen and I say add new employee, this is a new instance of employee entry activity, right? And if I hit the back button, remember we talked about this kind of like a stack of screens, a stack of activities. So when I hit the back button here, what happens to that instance of employee entry activity? Debt gone along with 
the variables that he controls, including the employee. So if I want to still have access to that employee back here, I need to have some way of communicating that, right? Now, we do have some ways of accomplishing this. I'm going to go one direction first. All right, so I'm going to create another activity and we're going to pass this information to that activity. Because the thing we're really um, talking about here, let me open up Keynote. How do I send info to different screens? All right, we really have, we have three options. Now there's two built-in options. So one way is I can start an activity for a result. Let me, I'm not going to actually go through that one, but I'll just show you the starting points for it. It'll make pretty good sense how it works. So notice here, when I said this dot start activity, if I say this dot start activity, isn't it for result? Let me just Google this real quick. Start activity for result. Oh, I just wasn't seeing it in my list. Okay. So I can say start activity for result, give the exact same thing. Now, um, let me just go back here. So notice here that this guy, he returns a value. So start activity for result, he's going to, well, that's actually, I want to look at this one. Actually, he's going to take in this thing called a request code that I'll then have to look up afterwards. So let me just show it to you on this guy. How do I receive the result? So you have this callback method called on activity result. Here's the Java version of this. So when an activity finishes, so when we come back to that screen, this this function would get called. So we'd have to say, I want to know about this. Here, we'll just actually write this. <clears throat> just to show you how it works. So I'll throw that guy in there and We're going to say um, toast dot make text this received result for code result code. And then toast dot length long <coughs> dot show. All right, so it'll pop up on the screen that we have received a result. I'll show you how to get the result in a second. And then we'll start activity for result. And I need to give this guy two pieces of information. I need to give him um, the intent. So that's I, as well as the result code. So I'm going to just give this a, a one. My result code is going to be a one, like that. And so I won't start the activity this way anymore. Okay, so this that's our activity for result. And this activity is going to have like a, a unique identifier, in this case, one. 
so that when I get back to this screen and I get an activity result, this guy automatically has the request code sent in. And then I can say, um, uh, well, actually, you can have something that gives you multiple codes back. So I'll show you that here in a second when I go to the other side. So when I'm starting this activity, I'm saying, I expect a result from this guy. So when I get back to the screen, I expect that there will be a call to this function. And that call auto automatically happens. So I'm saying that my request code is going to be a 1. So this guy is going to have to set that on his way back to give me the answer. Okay? So this is what's ultimately going to get called. If I come up here, we've already written this uh, piece of code. So start activity for result. We've given it the intent. And then here's the, the value um, <clears throat> uh, for our contact request, whatever. All right, so then our result is here. So now giving us the result, well, this is the reading the contact date. I'll show you that in a second. Okay, where is my code for returning the result? shows you how often I do it this way. I usually use the life cycle or a singleton is what we're going to look at today. Result intent put extra uh, set result. Okay. So over here on this screen I should be able to, I can do it wherever I want, but I'm actually going to override, well, let me do it this way. I'll say this dot intent Oh, I'm an employee, I need to be in the activity. So this is after we've updated the guy. We'll have it go back to the previous screen. Uh, actually, let's do it on the first one, so I'm gonna have to hit it twice. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna say this dot get intent. So the intent is like a suitcase, all right? That gets passed into an activity as the activity is being created, and then can come out of that, all right? So. Um, I'm gonna actually add to our notes here. So we can start an activity for a result, or we can do something called put extras. So this adds values to the intent for someone else to work with. And this is a two-way communication if used in conjunction with start activity for result. All right, so any way you cut it, when I start an activity, I'm passing an intent. When that activity comes back, I get that intent back if I had started that activity for a result. So I hide my results inside of that intent. Maybe hide is the wrong word, but I put my result inside of that intent. <coughs> but it's also a way for me to get information to that next screen. So I'll just show that here at the same time. So if I'm back on our main activity screen, 
and I have my intent, I can say I dot put extra, and this is giving me an, the ability to put a name value pair. So we're gonna call this guy um, my value. Okay, and we're gonna set this equal to 15. All right, so this is gonna put an extra into the suitcase, into the intent, named my value, and I'll get a 15 out of it. All right, that makes sense? So that is, when I, this is on the main screen, so when I hit add new employee, right before I start that up, I'm shoving this value called my value into the intent, setting it equal to 15. Let me copy that real quick. So then over here on the employee entry activity, <clears throat> after I do make toast here, I'll just go one direction first. We've already seen the name of the employee we created. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say this dot get intent get extra, and this is gonna be a int extra named my value. And you have to give it a alternative value in the event that it can't find it. So if you want me to put this in a variable, it might look a little cleaner. Int my value is equal to that. So I'll ask my intent to get an integer extra from it, named my value, and it'll give me a zero if it can't find it. I can choose whatever I want with the default value, but I expect it to be a 15 because I know I put it in there. I packed that in my luggage on the first screen, right? So I'll go ahead and extract that right here and then I'll just tack it on to my value here. Go ahead. So like in real life, would that just be like the employee number? Could be, yeah, it might be their employee ID. So you can reference <clears throat> that employee from that number then? Potentially, if you want to take it down that route and have it in the store in a database and say, you know, I'm just passing the employee, like your phone number yeah. around and I can look up a student by that. But okay. this could be anything. I can put as many, okay. think of this as like an infinite size suitcase. Okay. You can pack as many things in the intent as you want. Okay. And that information can mean whatever you want. I can put in strings. I can put in doubles. It doesn't matter. I can put in whatever I want in there. And it's a way of packing it because I'm going to a new place, just like a trip, right? You pack your suitcase and things you want to take with you on that trip, you put into your suitcase. In this case, our suitcase is called an intent. And when we get to our destination, we unpack our suitcase and all the stuff we packed is in there. So in this case, over in main activity, I am putting my value into my suitcase. Over here in employee, uh, entry activity, I am removing my value from my suitcase. Put it in there when I, before I leave. Now I've arrived at the second activity, I'm gonna open it up and now I have access to that variable. And I'll prove I have access to it here when I create my first employee. So it doesn't matter, so I'll say add new employee. I'll just put stuff in here. All right, now it doesn't, yeah, this guy is a tall dude who doesn't weigh very much. <laughs> All right, so now when I hit create, it's gonna create my stupid employee or whatever, but we should see that 15. We were able to get that information from screen one to screen two. So I'll hit create, and there's my 15 right there. How does the 15 get stored? Does it get stored as a string? Uh, no, it gets stored as a, as an int because I, well, can... actually it probably actually gets stored as a string and then it pulls it out because I've kind of mentioned okay. Java is a, um, string based language. So it probably stores it as a string and then extracts from there. Okay. Um, but they give us convenience methods to pull out values. Um, you know what? I bet you it actually gets stored as, as its real type for okay. performance reasons. Okay. But notice here I said. I wanted to get an integer extra. Uh, so I said, I know that guy's an int, I wanna get that int, but just in case you didn't find it, rather than crash, just go ahead and give me a zero back. Yeah. Is there a way to make like multiple objects off of one large 
multiple objects off of. So, give me an example of what you're trying to what you're trying to do. So you want to be able to create multiple employees on this one screen and have it get added to some sort of collection of employees somewhere? Yeah. We're getting there. Yeah. So yes, the answer is yes, you can do that. And we're actually, I'm going to show you, I'm showing you the fundamentals of this. Right now, we're showing you how can I create a single employee and have access to it in different parts of my app. There, there's no difference between that and creating an array list of employees and having access to that array list in different places in my app. Go ahead. So, do when you put it in intent, what if you were to what if you were to simply click on the uh, create new employee again with the same the exact same information? Does like recognize that? Or? Well, we haven't right now. You're connecting this idea of my value to an actual employee, and we're just we're just creating an example of how do I pass a random piece of information from point A to point B. I just happen to be working inside of an employee app to show so you this little skill. Right now, for no reason, but yeah. you would get to write the logic of whether you wanted there to be a unique ID for every employee or, or, or not. Other questions? Go ahead. The fact that you, put, you concatenated my value with that string made my value a string. Like, like, is that my... This guy? Oh, this guy? Well, yeah, this whole thing is a string. Okay. Yes, yeah, so this is just going to start with the string employee created, followed by a space, and then I'm tacking whatever my value held on to the end of it. So that's how you glue strings together. So I'm building that into a string. Just proving we got the value. Yeah, so don't overthink this from an employee perspective. Pretend like we're not dealing with employees, right? <laughs> On this screen, I am packing my value being equal to 15 into my bag. On this screen, I am unpacking my value from my bag and then proving I got that 15 by putting it inside my toast. Make sense? So that's what I'm doing right there. So that's going one direction. That's from the, the, the main activity, activity one, that's starting activity two passing some information to activity two. Now, the guy that kind of works hand in hand with that is what if I want activity two to get some information back to activity one? Make sense? <coughs> this is still done through put extras. So what I'm gonna do here is, I'm going to say this dot, ooh. get intent dot put extra we'll call this guy employee name so we'll get connected to our employees here and we'll say this dot the employee dot to string all right and then what we'll go ahead and do <clears throat> is we'll say this dot let me make sure I get the syntax right here. We're actually going to do this in a new bag. So I'll set up my toast. And then we're going to call this, so we're going to say intent return bag is equal to a new intent. So you're actually kind of bringing an extra suitcase home with you. Hey, this is my return in my return bag. So you bought souvenirs, right? On your trip and they got another suitcase. Any of you ever go on trips and pack a suitcase inside your suitcase? Oh, wait, no. Or pack like a duffel bag inside of your suitcase. That way you have a su another thing you can check on your way back. Okay, so we, we, we have another bag that we can put some answers into. And <laughs> free suitcase? <laughs> I always go shopping for suitcases at the carousel. Yeah. I, care, I, do, I do my carry-on that I head down to baggage claim anyways. 
<laughs> you gotta wait till the very end, otherwise you get caught. But that was in the baggage. It's not wrong. Well, you're the baggage carrier. <clears throat> All right, so for our return bag, we'll go ahead and put extras. We'll put the employee name, and we'll just convert it to a string. And then I'm going to set the result. So this dot set result. And I'm going to set result code to uh, activity dot result OK. It doesn't really matter what you pass here. It's your way of signaling uh, the other guy whether or not everything worked out OK or whether there was a problem, you know, whether or not it should actually take the value out of this. I'll kind of show you on the other side. So we're setting some results. So we're going to go ahead and say everything went, everything went fine. Thumbs up. And um, then we'll say, uh, here's my return bag. Okay. And then we're going to go ahead and tell this activity to finish. So I'll say this dot finish. So in this case, we won't get to use our update because what, what finish does is it tells my activity to end. That second screen will end. It's equivalent to me hitting the back button, right? But I've... Now I don't have to manually hit the back button. This hits the back button for me. Okay. So when I create a new employee, I'll go ahead and create it. I'll yell and say, employee was created. Here's the value. We're probably not going to see that for a second because right afterwards we're getting a new suitcase. We're throwing the employee name into the suitcase. <clears throat> then we're telling this activity to set the result to everything worked out. This is a uh, activity has a field. Uh, it's actually a static field since it's being called by the class name um, called result. Okay. It's probably a numeric. And then I'm going to throw the bag. This is where my, this is where you can find my answers. All right. And then we tell this guy to finish. What we'll see in here, if I go back to main activity. So my second screen, my employee add new or my employee entry activity. When he ends, and he ended in a fashion that is set result, back here in main activity, this on activity result will automatically happen. Make sense? It'll automatically happen. <coughs> so what I'll actually put in here, I'll say string employee name is equal to, this is the intent that was passed back. It gets me grabbing my bag off the carousel. All right, so that guy here, data, was my return bag or whatever I called it over here. My return bag. So I'll go ahead and say data dot get string extra. And what did I name that? Employee underscore name. All right, so there's my, and notice I didn't have to give this guy a default value because the default value for a string would just be the empty string if I can't find it. All right, so I'll get a string extra called employee name. Let's just make sure I spelled that right because I do need to match if I misspell it or something. It, won't show up. I think I got it right here, but I'll just paste it anyways. All right. So I'll go ahead and grab the employee name from that. Um, and then we'll just say received result. And I'll throw the employee name. And that should be a toast up on that screen. We should see the employee name now came back. All right. This, go ahead. For an int, rather than setting the value like if it can't find anything to zero could you set it to null <clears throat> so would it just print out null is not a legal value for an ant primitive type okay yeah you can give yourself a um um i think that's a true statement i'm 99 percent positive we can test it here real quick yeah yeah okay yes second argument must be of type int so you can come up with some like, you know, negative 17,221 or something. That's just your magical secret code that 
If I get that guy, it was a bad result. He didn't. He, he didn't. He didn't. He didn't find it. Something like that. Not necessarily great programming practice. That makes your code hard to read. Um, but certainly with strings, you can give a null value. Okay. Um, okay. <clears throat> so let's see this work first, and then we'll kind of draw the picture of what we just did. Because right now we're playing this game with put extras. Now I'm going to give you a little heads up here. What I'm going to show you here in a few minutes doesn't use put extras, and it's better. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hence the reason I'm not overly familiar. I've done put extras plenty of times, but I have to look it up. We use something called a singleton design pattern, and it's more convenient. And as long as you are careful with it, it's better. Um, although this guy does have some advantages on this return. All right, so let's go ahead and run this. <clears throat> so I'm going to add a new employee, and we'll go ahead and put... Are we cut? Are we cutting weight? I'm just, cut just, cut just cut, just cut a little. Yeah, we're cutting a little. Yeah, but if I put a high enough number, you're not going to know whether that's actually cut or I'm still being generous. <laughs> that, that sounds about right. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to go ahead and hit create here. And what will we see? When I hit when I hit create, it's going to show me the number 15 that I passed to this screen. Then it's going to create a new bag. It's going to stuff the name of this employee into this bag and then tell that I'm returning a result and then tell this activity to finish. Okay. So I'll go ahead and hit create. There's the Mike Littman there back on the original screen. I promise you there was a, that 15 did appear for a, ever so slightly on the second screen before that second screen finished. Does that make sense? Well, you already saw it. Uh, you know, you saw me show the 15 before. We did get the 15 in the previous screen. Go ahead. So is there a way to get that to, like, I guess, stay stored on this page without closing? But, like, you wouldn't be able to see it, but if you press create, it would somehow, like, write it to this screen and it would stay there. And then you could... Yeah, 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 yeah. So what we can do here is we can not finish. And then maybe when I do this a second time, then I can say this dot finish. So now the first time I am setting the result for this activity, but I'm requiring a second click of that button to get me back to the first screen. Um, and if I wanted to store local variables all over the place, I, I, I could in that case. So I'm not forced to set my answer in return. <clears throat> so would there be a way to pass this data into a, um, like a view screen in, in the like Oh on this screen? Yeah, like oh. you had a field and you could like set the text to that. Yeah, I could put a text view on here and then set the text for that text view. Okay. So if I hit create here, I should see my fifteen. Right, where it's reading from the bag I sent to the screen. And it is setting the result, but I'm not actually ending. So there's my 15 right there. All right, and my employee has been created. But I've already set this activity up. I've already loaded the bag into the, uh, the plane. So it's ready to fly back after takeoff. Now, if I make any adjustments or whatever, when I hit this create button again, now it's getting into that else to update my employee. And at that point in time, it's going to finish this guy, and there's my employee name down here. Yeah. Make sense? So there's round trip example. Me taking information from screen one, passing it to screen two, screen two doing whatever it does, and then sending information back to screen one, where screen one gets notified. So screen, this line right here, set result. This notifies screen one that a result is included. And then back here in screen one, this gets called 
automatically when a result was provided by another screen. <clears throat> Make sense? So, in the big scheme of things, what's this guy called? On activity result. Known as a callback function in most languages. So this is a function that automatically gets called when we return back to this screen. These are callback functions. Go ahead. If we wanted to store data independently from activities, could we send data from an activity to say like a class that wasn't an activity? It's called a singleton. <laughs> yeah, that's 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 our very next thing. Yep. The answer is yes. <laughs> this is what we can do. All right. So now the one thing I'll say, and I don't want to go too deep into this right now, is we actually can pack an entire employee into extras. We can put an object, an object, but we would need to make that um, employee something called serializable. I'm going to talk about that here in the next week or so, but for right now, just let me not talk about it. <laughs> All right. But you just say implement serializable on the employee and it just magically works. So just kind of roll with that for right now. <clears throat> um, okay. So let's look at the alternative way. So what I can do here, well, here, let me introduce the design pattern first. So we've already looked at MVC design pattern, right? It's a good idea to separate your code from your interface from your data. All right, the singleton design pattern says, it's a good idea to store information that needs to be accessed by multiple, we'll say things, in a single place. So the idea would be if you live in an apartment with two or three roommates and you all share a car, you have one set of car keys you keep in the drawer or something like that, and when the car is not there, keys should be gone. When the car is there, keys should be in the drawer, first come, first serve, something like that. You know, so you've, you have a single storage location that everybody shares from that you all have access to regardless of which human being we're talking about. Okay, in this case, we want to share information about an employee between screen one and screen two, and screen three and screen four and screen 10, right? So we want to have this information that's kind of globally available to our application, all right? Now, I'm going to put a little warning in here. Be careful not to just make everything global as your code will become difficult to maintain. So we might say, with great power comes great responsibility. <laughs> All right, so this is an easy thing to do. Singletons are super convenient. Would we agree that what we just did with all the put extra stuff, it wasn't that it was that hard, right? But it's a little bit kind of convoluted. You know, I needed to get some information to screen two, so we toss a couple of pieces of information into the bag. We ship it off to screen two. Screen two pulls the stuff out, can do whatever it wants with it. And if he wants to get information back, he has to set up as a result, put another bag in there, pack his stuff up in there. You know, we're basically dealing with, uh, you know, I guess UPS, right? We're shipping something to screen two, we're shipping something back to screen one. And it's a delivery system, okay? Um, so in this other way of doing it, now I'm gonna actually show you my version of doing this. There is a, um, if I go to file new, there is a singleton class in here. Create singleton, I don't use that. I make a simpler singleton than this. Um, in fact, I don't know why they make theirs that way. 
but don't worry about it. <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create a new class in here. It's just going to be a normal plain Jane Java class. Now, for one reason or another, I typically will call my singleton, especially in applications where I just have a single singleton, I call it core for no reason. Just that's the core location, core storage, something like that. So I'll call it core. And it's asking me if I want to add this to my Git repository. I'm going to hit yes, remember this, and then I'll say add. That way, whenever I create new classes, it automatically throws it into the repository. So when I check this back in, it'll be there. All right, so here is my core class. Now I'm going to fill my core class up with, with public static variables. So public static employee. Yay. No. All right, so I'm going to give myself a variable of type employee called the employee. And I can start it off being equal to null if I want. Okay. That's it. Done with my singleton. Wow. <laughs> so now we'll go in here to the second screen. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to dump this local employee because I want my whole app to know about this employee. I don't want him to just live here locally. So what I'm going to do is if core dot the employee static field, how do we call static members using the name of the class in which it was defined? Core dot the employee, core dot the employee. I'm going to go ahead and get, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to comment out this return bag stuff because it sucks. We're not going to use that. All right. Um, <clears throat> I'm also going to, uh, I'm going to comment out my update. We won't update on this screen anymore. Okay, so right now what we'll do is we'll create an employee and as soon as we've created the, we don't even need to ask the employee equal the null thing so we can even take that out. Because we're just going to create an employee and I'll just move this uh, guy here. All right, so we read in our piece of information. We go ahead and set our global employee equal to this new employee. Um, <clears throat> and here I, I'll comment out. I'm no longer going to get my extra thing. I'm no longer going to toast that. So I'll read in my piece of information. I'll set my employee that lives in the singleton equal to my new employee. And then I'll tell this guy to finish. Okay, that's it. On this screen. On this screen, I'll no longer start the activity for result. I'll just do a plain Jane start activity. If I really wanted this guy to know about that my value, I can go up to core and I can say public static int my value. And then inside here, I can say core dot my value is equal to 15. Now that's globally available. Second screen can go ahead and grab it by just saying core dot my value. All right, but we're, we don't have to worry about that in this case. So I'll start my activity. We'll create an employee. He'll set the global employee and then tell that guy to finish. So go ahead and run this. So I'll go ahead and create my employee. Hit create. Now my core.employee has been set. But now I'd like to prove to myself that it was set here. Right? So before we had a method get automatically called. 
right? It was automatically called when I had a return result. So I'm gonna show you the activity lifecycle. <clears throat> I think the screen will show us what we need to see. It's okay, yeah. All right, so when an activity is launched, notice the very first thing that happens is on create. We're already familiar with that. That's when we initialize everything, right? Then there's this next function that's called on start that we haven't used yet, but that's the next function that automatically gets called if you choose to write it. Then there's an on resume. Now notice that on resume gets called when a user returns to this activity. So that means when I leave this activity to go to my screen too, when I come back to this activity, on resume will automatically get called. All right, I'm actually gonna copy this image. Throw that in there so you can reference it. <clears throat> so what I'll do here in my code, back inside of main activity, I'll go ahead and just start typing on resume. And notice it automatically kind of fills it in for me. Just press enter on it. And it'll override the on resume function for me. And it'll go ahead and call the parent's version of on resume, whatever that might do. Leave that in there. And then what I'll go ahead and do is I'll just copy my toast line. But no longer is it employee name. Now it's core dot the employee dot to string. So when I come back to this screen, I'll go ahead and have it toast proving that my employee that was set up there now has been, uh, re I have access to it in the main screen. So let's see this work. My app shouldn't be my, do I have an error somewhere in my code? I've been deleting several things. Starting, it should be fine. That guy should be fine. So we create the employee, we click finish. look at my console here because we're getting so whenever you get weird errors on things there's this thing down here in the bottom called log cat and if I click on that and I say show me just my errors let's see what this guy so it's line 31 oh 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 here's the reason why we look at our screen here, when does on resume happen? It happens on the way in and on the way back. When I first start my app, I don't have an employee yet. So its value is null. 
So I just need to wrap my on resume real quick with if core dot the employee is not equal to null. If I actually have a value in there, then go ahead and do my toast thing. So now I'll run this. It'll work this time. We'll go ahead and create a new employee. I'll give it a real name. And then the rest of it, I'll just do whatever. Now I'll hit create. We come back, and there's the Mike Littman. Okay. <clears throat> Makes sense? Yeah. So singleton's a lot easier to get stuff between two screens. Yeah. For your homework, per request, on your add employee screen now, we're going to have in our singleton an array list of employees where we'll add a collection of employees. So every single time we add an employee, we'll be adding it to our list. We won't actually show the contents of the list yet. Next time we'll show how do we put a list of stuff out. Okay, but for right now, instead of collecting a single employee, we're gonna collect an array list of employees. Make sense? Go ahead. Sarah, you have a question? Um, no, I would say add one at a time. So you have this collection up in, I'll just actually create it for you. So originally you're going to have a public static array list of employee objects. <laughs> Call the employees. So you now have this global list that every single time you add an employee, it'll add it to this list. Okay. So I am just adding one at a time. One at a time to this container. And then next time we're going to use this container. Okay? And if you want, you can prove to yourself on this on the main screen that you've added a new employee. Maybe you always show the last thing that was in your list. You know, the very last thing is a toast or something like that. Go ahead. I'm going to update to GitHub right now. Yep. So just so you can see on the recording here as you're, I know, backing up. Remember today is student, faculty, staff, Bible study, God and Grub, signing in the cafeteria. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say commit. I'm making changes. So I'm going to say commit. I'll just say changes for homework. And then down here. I'll say commit and push. And then I'll say commit and push. Finally, I'll say push. And now it's up there on GitHub. All right. And I will push. Those of you who are having lunch with the uh, visiting student who I forgot to introduce, but <laughs> um, go ahead and meet in the cafeteria. Somebody grab a big circle table, and then we're going down to Bible study after a little bit. So when you're creating a new